Hey everyone, this is Derek. In this video, we're going to look at the domain of a function defined by an equation. Um, so I wrote a couple up here of um, just a couple polynomials, a linear and a quadratic. And so if you think about these kinds of equations, you can put anything in for x, right? Um, there's no issue. I can put negatives, positives, zero. These are all good. So for polynomial, the domain for those is always all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. Um, rational functions though, so rational functions have the problem of division by zero. So if I try to take a number and divide it by zero, um, that comes up undefined. So when we're looking at a rational, we're going to have to try to figure out what makes the denominator zero and then exclude that from our domain. And then for square root functions, for those, we can take the roots of, um, we take the root of zero, we can take the root of a positive number, um, but not negatives, or at least on an even root. And we're, in this case, we're looking at square roots. So the radicand is going to have to stay greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so for the examples, um, we're going to find the domain of each of these functions, and then we're going to give our answer in interval notation. Uh, so here, we have a rational. So what that means is that the denominator doesn't get to equal zero, essentially. We can't, have, we can't let x equal something that makes the denominator zero. So to do that, we just set the denominator to zero and solve and figure out what would mess it up. So 2x minus 7 equals 0. Add my 7 over. Uh, 2x equals 7. And then dividing, I get x equals 7 halves. But remember, this is really the what we can't have. Because if it was 7 halves, the 2s would cancel. 7 minus 7 is 0. 5 divided by 0 would be undefined. Um, so here, we, to write this in interval notation, it's kind of annoying. We have to go, we're going to go from negative infinity up to the 7 halves. And then we're going to use a parenthesis to exclude the 7 halves because we don't want to include it. That's a bad number. Then we're going to pick back up at 7 halves again and then go out to infinity. So in terms of like a line graph, what we did there was basically said 7 halves, uh, no. But everything except 7 halves, yes. Um, so that's what that means. Uh, for this one, uh, this is going to be a root. And so when we have a square root like that, Remember, the radicand has to stay greater than or equal to 0. Uh, so here, I'll subtract the 6 over and get negative 3x is greater than or equal to negative 6. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. And then the thing i got to remind you there is that when you multiply or divide both sides of a radical, I'm sorry, both sides of an inequality by a negative, um, you have to remember to flip the direction of the inequality. So here, this is going to come out x, and now instead of greater than, it's going to be less than or equal to positive 2. Uh, and if you try those numbers, those are the ones that will work. Uh, you know, x less than or equal to 2, try x equals 0. 6 minus 0, yep, that's true. If you tried something larger than that, uh, say 3, 6 minus 3 times 3, that would be 6 minus 9. Negative 3, that doesn't work. Um, so again, if you multiply or divide by a negative, just remember to flip the inequality. Uh, in interval notation, so this is the x's are less than or equal to net 2. So that's going to go negative infinity and then up to 2. And then that one, same idea. It's actually that these two combined. So we have a radical. So that means this stuff has to be greater than or equal to 0, except it can't be equal to zero this time because that radical happens to be in a denominator. So here I'll just move my three over and get x is greater than negative three or in interval notation, uh, negative three to infinity.